Hey everyone, it's Brandon from the future. Um, this is going to be yet another long video from me, so I've gone ahead and put all the timestamps out here. Uh, if you do want to scroll along to whatever timestamp and watch from there, you can do that, or you can click on those timestamps uh, depending on where you're watching this. Either way, those are there for you just in case you want to jump around on this video. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy watching. Hey everybody, it's Brandon. As always, I hope you are staying safe and you are doing well in these difficult times we are currently in. So I recently undertook a great personal effort um, to create a song cover video, like something I had never done before. Um, this was for the Goo Goo Doll song, Iris. Um, this is, of course, probably their signature song. And there was a lot going into this video that I had to prep for. Um, if you are watching this video right now, I would encourage you to go watch that video first. Um, I will leave links to this wherever you are watching, be it on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, or if you're watching on Instagram, you can check the link in my bio. Um, and that it's going to still be up there because um, I'm just too damn proud of it. <laughs> but yeah, there was so much um, going into this video. I had been sitting on this concept of a video or covering Iris since like my sophomore year of high school where I remember just goofing around in band practice, marching band practice, where I would have a bass guitar and a mandolin both on me at the same time, and I'm sitting there switching back and forth between them, playing along to Iris, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, this would be a cool thing to do someday where I can do all the instruments for the song, and well, there we go. This is what that was, um, and I'm very, very proud of it, and I was ecstatic that I got to do this for Mud Mother. Um, and drop it on Mother's Day. So Mama Mama Tater was very happy with uh, the outcome of that video. I, again, I'm, I'm just over the moon about just having this video done. And uh, if you have watched that and you've sent me some feedback, uh, again, wherever you're watching, thanks a ton. Um, I do really appreciate that. And again, I can't, I just can't stress enough. Um, there, uh, this is like the first time that I've ever gotten exhausted doing one of these videos. Maybe even literal blood, sweat, and tears going into making this video, and um, I just wanted to go uh, piece by piece. Um, I played a total of four instruments for this cover. Um, I did bass guitar, of course, mandolin, uh, acoustic guitar, and electric guitar. Uh, um, sorry, that's four. <laughs> but I did those four instruments, and you know, it was uh, treading into territory that I had not covered before. Um, I've done covers in the past, a couple covers of doing, you know, just like a one guitar, and bass. Uh, this was taking that and turning it up to like 20 out of 10 uh, on the scale of difficulty and uh, doing so. And for this video, we're gonna go piece by piece with each instrument I did in this video, um, going from the order that I first recorded everything, and then just going through each instrument, things I had to account for, um, things that came up that I didn't plan for, <laughs> Um, and then just kind of weaving everything together, both in um, the audio side of things, which I did through my favorite uh, doll of choice, which is Reaper, um, and then also the video side of things, which was done through Adobe Premiere. So uh, with that, we'll cut right to it, and this is the making of Iris. So to start off, I recorded the bass part of the song first, um, just because I'm naturally a bassist first, and that felt like that made the most sense to me, uh, undertaking this effort to, you know, do a cover of Iris. And, you know, that ended up being great for this, and I think this is going to be my standard going forward when I do multi-instrument covers, is do the bass first. And, sorry, the bass part of this is actually going to be quite short, because, again, it was the easiest piece uh, <laughs> recording. Um, what I had done simply was I ran this bass through my pedal board, uh, ran that into a Livewire DI box, and of course that in turn runs into my Focusrite 2i2 interface, which I use to, of course, capture the sound, record that into Reaper, uh, and go from there. Uh, so that was that. And then I had a variety of little effects that I use on a regular basis uh, through Reaper that uh, just I use as enhancement for bass tone. I have not gotten into tinkering with amp sims and cabs for bass yet. I just felt I haven't had the need to do that yet. I may come across that at some point. I just have not done that yet, so I did not do that for this video. Um, but that was essentially it for bass. And again, easiest part of this to get done and uh, down and done. I have a hybrid style of recording where um, some things I do record um, both the video and the audio at the same time. I typically do that for bass because um, it's really easy to do that. Um, the other three instruments that I played in this video, um, I'm sorry if you are not a fan of this, but it is actually the most practical thing to do when 
uh, creating these playthrough cover videos. Record the guitar separately before you record the video. I, I can't stress that enough. For the longest time, I, I wanted to be on that track of, you know, record everything, um, record everything video and audio wise at the same time, and then, you know, go from there. Um, but it's not quite fun when you have to stop and restart everything. Um, whereas, you know, pre-recording takes a little bit of the edge off of actually recording the video piece. Um, so that's what I had done for the Iris video. And that's why um, the next three instruments that I recorded for this, I pre-recorded first. And then I, with what I recorded, uh, mined to it on video. Now this, this thing's huge. It's huge on the camera. Okay, so the next piece was recording the acoustic guitar. The acoustic guitar is probably the driving piece and most unique part of the song in that um, there's something very unique about how I've set this guitar up and I've had this guitar set up this way uh, for a long time solely just to be ready for this video. Um, and the situation with the acoustic guitar in this is that for those of you who may or may not be musicians or you have not extensively dived down the deep rabbit hole of what you can tune a guitar to. Your uh, standard six string guitar, of course, going low to high, lowest string here down on the bottom. You go E, A, D, G, B, and another high E. Yeah, with Iris, um, Iris is a song, like a couple notable Goo Goo Dolls songs, where John Rzesnik, I hope I'm saying that right, actually does some really wonky and out there guitar tunings for um, playing an acoustic guitar part of the song. And Iris, again, being their most famous song, probably also has the most out there guitar tuning um, you could probably ever encounter. What John Rzesnik did on this, uh, or on Iris, was going low to high. He went B, D, 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 uh, D, and uh, D. That's a lot of D. And of course, one of the questions and issues that comes up when you are putting guitars in all these wonky tunings is that you have to account for various different string gauges in order to um, hold the tuning and that you can, if you need to, uh, be able to bend comfortably without things going out of tune. So with this guitar, I had to do some digging around on the internet to figure out how I could accomplish this because using a set of strings for standard tuning, or typically used for standard tuning rather, was not going to work here. So here's what I came up with for achieving the tuning of the acoustic guitar for Iris. I managed to locate a site that contains a huge array of just all sorts of different guitar tunings, and thankfully they had a page specifically dedicated to Iris. And so what I had to do to achieve the BDD DDD tuning of the acoustic guitar for Iris is going now in reverse high to low. Following the instructions of the site, I used two Ernie Ball 10 gauge strings uh, for the two high D strings. And then following that, I used two 26 Ernie Ball strings for the uh, quote unquote two middle D strings. And then for the low D string, I used a 46, which is typically you find that as your low E string on an electric guitar, um, but that works for winding it up to uh, D. And originally for that low B string, I used an Ernie Ball 54 string. I didn't like that, however, as it really didn't hold that low B very well, and it was kind of flabby and, you know, really didn't ring out that well. Um, so I kind of got stuck and I was thinking, well, what am I going to use uh, in place of this if I don't want to um, use this, or, you know, use a guitar string uh, for this low B? Well, thankfully, at the time that I had been restringing and putting this uh, string set up on my Ovation Acoustic for the Iris video, I had also been restringing my Yamaha RBX374 Jet Black Bass. And what I ended up doing was, and this is where this gets really ridiculous for, you know, putting a, uh, a, a crazy tuning on a guitar. I took what was formerly the C string, I had it tuned to C because that bass is in both drop C and uh, D standard. I took the C string, which is a 70 gauge bass string, uh, cut it down to size and wound it onto the acoustic guitar. This had the effect of creating a huge <laughs> string going into uh, this guitar, which of course the string pokes out on the end of the guitar. And granted, on the string post, 
it looks horrible how it's wound up. Uh, but thankfully, you know, with that having that low B specifically for Iris, um, it held tune and it continued to hold or holds tune even as I make this BTS video. You know, <laughs> I was able to reduce, reuse, and recycle. And so again, this 170 gauge Ernie Ball bass string that I, you know, pulled off another bass um, to put on this acoustic guitar, it worked. And it was going to get me through uh, doing the Iris cover and all the other strings that I had already put on um, held tune just as well for all those Ds. And so that was that. The next glaring thing I ran into while getting this guitar ready to perform for the Iris video uh, was that this is the one instrument I do own that has no sort of pickups or electronics in it. Therefore, it cannot be readily amplified. There were a couple routes that I could go with this. One was maybe acquiring a pickup that you could, you know, lodge in the sound hole of the guitar um, and then run that out into, say, an amplifier or, again, a DI box to audio interface. Uh, and just amp sim that up, but I didn't have necessarily the adequate funds to do that after I poured some more money into another project that's currently in progress, which um, is going to be its own video, and that's coming uh, at some point. So I opted not to go for um, getting a pickup that I could just slap in the sound hole, run a wire out of, and you know, amp or uh, record that way. And thankfully, in my little studio space here, I have a couple microphones at my disposal. The first is a Cobalt EV microphone, kind of a almost an equivalent kind of to an SM57. Not really there, but you know, you could use it that way. I had originally tried pointing that at the sound hole of the guitar, but that just didn't sound good. So the next thing I tried was my uh, Shure PGA58 vocal mic. I figured why not give that a go, uh, we'll see how that goes, um, but again, not something I was particularly happy with, with um, trying to mic the sound hole of the guitar and try to get a good sound out of it. So what that left me with was using an MXL770 condenser microphone that I have, in which I just simply pulled that off of my little radio announcer stand that I um, have for a mic on my desk. I put the microphone on my uh, mic stand. And then simply when I came time to record, um, I put that much closer to the actual sound hole of the guitar. Um, what you see in the video is more for just monitoring purposes, um, where the guitar or the mic's actually closer to the tail end of the guitar, um, rather the actual or rather than the sound hole. And so this microphone really ended up producing the best sound for the acoustic guitar on the Iris video. Um, and I just took that and I ran with it. I recorded it to my later dismay. I had double tracked this microphone um, in that I had a single input going in and recorded the, or the acoustic guitar that way. That turned out to be a huge mistake. Um, so what ended up happening with the acoustic guitar in the final cut was I muted the right side guitar, centered the left side guitar track that I had and just kept that centered and let it go. Um, again, that ended up being, you know, trying to do more than I thought would be reasonable. Um, but, you know, just having that one guitar track worked out for the video. And then from there, uh, for, through a series of EQ and compression effects, I made it sound a little more shimmery, gave it a little more uh, prominence to the high end of the guitar so that all those high notes, all those open D strings would ring through. And so that, you know, the guitar would come out sounding as best as it possibly could. So the next piece of recording fell to this little beauty right here. And of course, this is my K-Tone mandolin, or as now we shall now call this instrument, the brandolin. <laughs> what the hell, Justin? I love it. So this was a bit easier in that um, through some previous videos I've done, I already had a good effects chain set up for recording this. So again, I just simply ran this out from a uh, chord into the DI box into my interface. And then from there, it was just a matter of kind of uh, tweaking the settings around in my effects chain to, you know, give the mandolin some room to breathe. Um, I ended up just single tracking this and panning it a little to the right, just so, you know, it stuck out a little bit. And that's why you hear, if you listen to the, or of course, listen to the final cut, the mandolin is on a little more on, this is my right, the right side of the uh, mix. And another thing with um, the mandolin piece of this is that there were actually kind of no reliable tabs and complete tabs for the mandolin part of iris um, there was plenty out there of just different pieces um, so i ended up having either to take some liberties with how i played or also kind of mishmashing a variety of different tabs and uh, play styles for that or for iris that are out there on youtube and tabs on the internet and such i am happy with how it turned out um, it was a little bit of a challenge to get get it to sound how i wanted um, 
it may not be quite all the way there but i think still it was a, you know it still ended up pretty good uh, on the mandolin side of things and then it was also um, really fun to bust this out for another cover and i've still got plenty to work on with this um, other videos as well um, even some solo stuff just with this mandolin and look at that you can see the tripod all right, and then of course the last piece of recording was the electric guitar. Um, again, this was another one of the easier side of things to do. Um, of course, because pickups, output jack, record, life's good. So this is, again, my John 5 uh, signature Telecaster. One thing to know about me is I absolutely adore Telecasters for electric guitars, and so that's what I used here. One of the most recent additions I had made, um, and I actually posted about this a while ago, um, for all my Telecaster style guitars that I have, or electrics that is, is that I put a uh, DiMarzio deactivator pickup in the bridge, and which has made a night and day difference for the sound that I usually like to get out of this guitar. And kind of like the mandolin situation, this was similar also in that because you don't see a lot of people actually doing the electric guitar part of the song aside from the solo. Of course you more see the acoustic side, um, even with the funky tuning. Not a lot of people really dive into the electric guitar piece of this song again, other than the solo. So again, a little bit of taking some liberties here. So with the chorus of Iris on just the electric guitar part, just what I did, and I kind of put this real towards the back of the mix, was just simply doing some sim uh, doing easy strumming, some easy chords, uh, doing a B minor, an A suspended second, and then a G chord. And that was it all for the chorus. And I tracked that on the neck pickup of this guitar. Um, there's actually a very, well, funny and unfortunate story why that was the case. Um, because I had tracked the solo of the song, the solo piece and its little build-up section. But what ended up happening after I tracked the audio for the solo of Iris on, again, on this bridge pickup, on this nice, beautiful DiMarzio deactivator, my toggle switch died. <laughs> this toggle switch no longer works and I'm really sad and I, I know it's it's the toggle switch because it's it's been somewhat janky to begin with I, I now need to get that fixed um, in order for me to use this uh, deactivator again on the bridge uh, so this guitar is somewhat out of commission at the moment um, but thankfully with the solo on iris and it's again a little build up before it I was able to track that on the bridge pickup simply what I did for recording this was again guitar out into DI box, into interface, and then within Reaper, again, my doll of choice, I currently am running Bias FX2 as a uh, amp modeler and amp simulator. Um, just kind of, I, I find the UI very, uh, very user-friendly. Um, just it takes a bit to craft some of the tones you would want to expect. Uh, but thankfully through their tone cloud, uh, where a lot of people will upload various presets and such, there was someone who uploaded a David Gilmore lead preset, and that was the one I, it was highly rated, so I downloaded it, I tweaked it a little bit, and that's what you ended up hearing on the final cut of the video recording, was this uh, slightly tweaked David Gilmore lead preset uh, on this Telecaster so I could go ahead and play the solo of Iris, which um, on its own is pretty simple, um, but it still, you know, sounds pretty good for just being a pretty simple solo. Of course, I'm much more, much more rhythmly inclined instead of lead inclined, um, so that was a nice, easy solo to do. Um, but hell, hopefully I can, you know, improve my lead skills and, you know, improve that as we go along and do some other, uh, other stuff on that front to uh, have some more lead guitar pieces in, in videos. And then on the video editing side of things, and maybe if I ever do may, uh, maybe a more generalized video of how I make my videos, um, is I go through Adobe Premiere. And so what I had done with uh, Iris in particular was I loaded all of the uh, tracks into you know the uh, little group or little section where you can load all your tracks of course and then start assembling things on the, on the uh, sequence and timeline and so um, I've color coded I went and color coded all of my instrument tracks just so I didn't accidentally delete something over the other because um, all my edits in these videos are extremely precise um, and I, I try to edit towards you know how the song flows and such and you know that depends on um, what that ever, whatever that may be in any point. And of course, probably the most fun piece of this um, when editing the video side of things for doing these multi-instrument covers is getting to show all four instruments on screen at once. I love doing this. It is so much fun. Uh, it's kind of difficult to pull off, or well, not difficult, but tedious. Um, but it's so much fun to do. And, um, you know, I, I, I had a lot of, a lot of room to work with with doing that. I mainly kind of stuck to the choruses for doing that because that's where all four of the instruments were really in, you know, even with the electric guitar 
doing its, you know, just real gentle thing in those parts of the song. And then when it came to the solo, that was, you know, the extremely, extremely fun piece of this, I think, in general was, um, you know, with the instruments or the bass, guitar, acoustic guitar and mandolin, I just ran my second angle down on the bottom of the screen and then with the guitar I made its own little section on screen so that could run and I could alternate the camera angles on the guitar and just leave the other instruments alone for a little bit. Editing it like that I felt was really fun to do and it really kind of put the part of the solo out there more um, whereas I, I could have easily done this four camera angle piece again where everything's you know in the same same spaces and looks the same. Um, but you know, I, I felt, no, I, I can play this solo. We're going to make it look damn good if I'm going to play this solo. So that's why I ran it like that. Um, such that again, you know, the electric guitar is out there and most prominent when it's on screen, uh, during that part of the song. And so that's really it for this video. This was again, the in-depth look of how I made this Iris cover in which again, um, was a monumental kind of task for me to try and pull on or pull on myself because and a lot of pieces going into it, things I needed to fix later on. Um, I was panicked that I wasn't gonna be able to finish this video at one point, um, but I, I still managed to get it done and have it out during Mother's Day. And again, I ran it for my mom and she absolutely loved it. So that was the most important piece of that for me. But in general, I love putting these sorts of videos out, uh, covering all sorts of different styles and songs and so on and so forth. So if you have not had the chance again to view the Iris cover itself, um, I would encourage you to do that. Um, I can't upload it to YouTube, but I can put it on my Google Drive and I've got that linked wherever you're watching this, be it on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I've got the or the uh, Google Drive link uh, linked in the description and the comments. And again, uh, if you're watching this through my IGTV upload, you can watch the Iris cover again through the link in my bio. It is still going to be there. I think I'm gonna have that up for quite some time again. Really, I am really proud of this video and I really was excited that I could finally see this sort of concept that I was holding onto uh, since high school fully executed and realized and you know, do it on an occasion that um, would really would really be good for it again because this is one of my mother's all-time favorite songs. Please feel free to hit me up in any messages of whatever platform again you're watching this on. Um, I would certainly love to answer any questions or if you just have any feedback, um, I would again greatly appreciate that. On uh, appreciate that. So yeah, lots of new fun stuff on the way. Um, but again, please be safe. I hope you are doing well during these trying times. We'll see what the future holds um, for both you know live performances and um, whatever I do here on video form. Um, other than that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you on my next video.